Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition. Last time, we found these holding cells in the ruins of an old religious temple that the goblins and drow have overtaken as their own. And down here, we managed to have a small fight, and in doing so, rescued Halsin, the lead druid from the druid's grove. And we have now been tasked with removing the three leaders of this goblin camp before Halsin feels that he can safely return to the goblin camp. And so now we will go on a very large murder spree. But first, let's see what we're missing in this room for stuff that we haven't yet looted or got on our hands on. Always nice to start with a little bit of gold. I don't know what is going to be through this ornate door. Nothing too harmful, I'm sure. And we will pick up this water barrel. As long as we don't get encumbered there, because we will need more water for our long rests that are to come. I'll steal a potato, sure. And we'll take some gold. We'll leave all the weapons and stuff. There's going to be so much of that. I don't think we'll need it. And this is just a small storage room. There's another barrel of water. And in the crates. Oh, a whole load of meat. We'll leave that there. And two potions of healing. That's very welcome. Right. Very quickly now, let's just find the other corpses and be on our way. I don't think the wargs are going to have anything on their persons. Yep. Correct. Were they eating the body of something that happened to have loads of magical items in its guts? Oh. Well. Warg Fang. Uncommon melee weapon, 1d4 piercing. Goblins shall not strike you down is etched into the dagger's handle. Grants disadvantage to goblin attackers. When goblin assailants realized they couldn't strike down this dagger's original owner, they threw him to the warg pens. Goblins have disadvantage on attack rolls against the wielder. Well, that's going to be incredibly useful. I'm glad I came and picked through piles of bones. Now, anything on the other side of this room, and then we have to decide who's getting that dagger. Is it going to be Shadowheart or Starion? Great big pile of acid, that's fun. We'll just deal with the chest for now. Beastmaster's Chain. The green jewel set into this necklace pendant is carved to resemble a cat's silvered pupil. Slivered. Uh, grains, chant, animal friendship. Super. And a bunch of healing potions. It's nice when they set you up for going on the adventure you're about to have, isn't it? And we have a bunch of goblin corpses as well. I'll take the grease, leave the battle axe. Is that the same corpse or is that a different corpse? Two hand axes. Let's try and not just slip on all this grease. Classic. Classic timing. Dude, you can get up, you know. Six seconds is not that long a time. Alright, just jump so you don't fall again. Thank you. So there are three goblins up here. They were the guards that were previously outside. And one person did run outside to alert those guards. So there may well be one individual outside expecting either the guards to come back in and say, Hey, everything's fine. Or they've gone to get further help. But we cannot know. Uh, that's just gold waiting to, be to become gold. And I think we had a peek in here earlier. There was a bunch of spell scrolls, if I recall. So, let's get the rest of the party back up the stairs. We are leaving Halston behind, because he told us that sometimes he goes full rage mode and just starts attacking everything very aggressively as a bear. And there's probably a time and place for that, but I like to be a little more calculated in my plans. Yep, Gale slipped and fell. 
let's take a look at some oh no it's all gone wrong let's take a look at some inventories so Astarian is currently dual wielding short swords so I think it makes sense to have him offhand wield the warg fang because that way we still get the benefit of if I find the right hotkey we still get the benefit of dual wielding and these two swords are the same so we can still have the majority of our attack damage doing its benefit but every attack against him from a goblin at least will be at disadvantage which is huge do we have anyone who's not wearing a necklace everyone is I don't think we're ever going to use the dancing lights cantrip so let's swap that out with Andrew that's one fewer thing that we need to prepare if we ever want to use it and we'll hand these arrows over as well and Gail you can be the party's water boy because you are unlikely to be carrying any other extra equipment any scrolls we want to pass along that we picked up I can't see any right now everyone's got plenty of potions so let's be on our way oh I learnt in the tooltips, I don't know if they were updated or if I'd just never seen the tooltip before, but if we take this potion of eight potions of healing here, this stack, and if I hold shift and drag it along, it automatically prompts me with a split. I have to go through all the right clicking and stuff, which just made me happy. All right, Andrew back with the party. These guys we have stolen from. So we're expecting a lot of fighting ahead. Fortunately, we still have a good number of spell slots and we have our arcane recovery for Gale. We have the same equivalent in natural recovery. We have both of our short rests left. So let's get ready to go on a reasonable murder spree. And let's have Astarian lead the party here. Since he now has disadvantage against any attacks against him. And he has the highest stealth stat. Oh, also, this thing was too heavy for us to get through. Uh, my intent is probably to come back later when we can wild shape without causing ourselves any issues. And just have Andrew pull it off. We've got three targets over here and a single individual over there. And it seems there aren't any other ways for this group to call attention to themselves. This might have been a war drum that we sniped from over here. Camera. They have various scrolls and potions on the table. But we can also get a good height advantage up this ladder. The thing we don't want to do though is have people running off to this direction in order to seek allies. So if we start a fight here, also what's that? Potion of Lightning Resistance. I'll see if I can remember to pick that up in a minute. If we start a fight here, we want it to be over before anybody can call for help. Because we have our three objectives. Priestess Gut, the Drow, Minthara, and Ragslin. And we'd like to have those as three individual fights rather than, obviously, one giant, many-roomed encounter all at once. So let's take Mr. Sneaky out for a hot second. Oh, hello. Ring of Poison Resistance. Sure, I guess it makes sense that a lot of people that were buried for 
their like magical clericdom will have many magic items on their person and we do have room for two rings so a starring can keep that to themselves obviously andrew already has poison resistance as a druid uh, sorry as a dwarf not as a druid Okay, if we want to get back to the main room, we have to go all the way around. So let's peek up the ladder. I thought there was another individual here, there. But that might just be this person walking back and forth. So it might be a three individual fight, not a four individual fight. Uh, the local rat might have something to say, but we're not that invested in finding out right now. The thing I'm really worried about is getting pushed down this ravine, either by simply strength tech, strength check, push um, mechanics, or Things like Thunder Wave. Excuse me, I just got distracted there for a second. So, as I was saying, we have three targets. This is a rat that we're not concerned with. And so, we just have to decide how we want to kick things off in here. This heavy door being locked, I think, is actually to our benefit because it's going to keep whatever's happening in this chamber separate from us. So, attacking from on high is obviously going to be advantageous. But I think it would be a bad plan to get all four of our party members on this shelf here that we can be then targeted by area of effect spells very easily. The other thing that we could do is kind of have our party just surround these people because it seems that we have relative free roaming to just walk up to them as drow and then instigate a fight as close to all of them as possible but for now I think I'm going to leave no I'm going to put a star in in the front lines because everyone has disadvantage on attacks against him and we'll start bringing everyone else up this ladder hopefully this goblin doesn't take offence to our presence I don't think we need to be sneaking around as much. Has it really taken me 13 minutes to loot a room? I feel like I've only been here for about three minutes. Yep, no one cares about a couple of drow just casually hanging out. The, um... The dwarf might be a harder sell. But Gale has almost entirely ranged attacks for the benefit of this. And they are all within range of shatter as well if we want to pop one of those off. So, in fact, what I'm going to do is let's wild shape into a wolf. While we're here, let's... Not enough strength, even as a wolf. But our strength as a wolf is, like, super high. If I could find the right screen. 17 is apparently not enough. Okay, well then a potion of hill giant strength might be required for that. But what we're going to do now is jump from here... No, we just have to take the ladder as a wolf. Very traditional. And they're not taking offense to the presence of a wolf either. Which is very interesting. If we could get an exposing bite and then immediately 
attack with sneak attack with a Starion. That could do a huge amount of damage very quickly. So let's take a Starion here. And let's just walk up to this group of people and see if they take offense to our presence. It might be that we meet a drow and they're like, hey, I know the drow around here and you're not one of them. The village to the east. It's abandoned. Looks that way. I'm just gonna have a seat. Said they heard something moving around out there. That's cool. I can handle that. It's not our concern. Our prey is elsewhere. Alright, this might work out. Let's make sure everyone else is ready. Gale. Uh, you can't really see down here, which is going to be somewhat of a problem, although we can use spells that inflict a saving throw rather than those that do an attack roll to mitigate that problem slightly. And Shadowheart, I'd like you down this end to start with just to catch off any stragglers that try and run away. I'm going to let this person walk back over in this direction slightly so that they're further away from the door when initiative kicks off and then we're going to try a nipping attack followed by a sneak attack which should be at advantage because Andrew is within range of the foe there you go they can walk over that way And now's as good a time as any to kick off, I think. Andrew. Uh, okay, I'm going to get a star in just to stand first. Right, here we go. Please hit. Okay, that's good. And Astarian is super high. So this foe is... Creature is distracted. The next attack against this creature within, within five feet is guaranteed to be a critical hit. So, since that is the case, and this is sneak attack melee, I'm going to spend a bonus action as Astarian to coat my weapon in poison so that if we sneak attack we will do 2d6 plus 5 plus 2d6 plus 2d4 because all the dice rolls on a crits are doubled and this says 100% which seems wild to me but I'll take it and we hit for 19 which is slightly underwhelming but sure uh, they don't seem to have the surprised condition but do we have all of us in combat I think we do it's hard when the pictures are different uh, Andrew has an action but they kicked off this thing so they're not currently in the order so let's go back to Astarian Shadowheart why are you greyed out over here I'm just waiting to take your turn. Sure. Astarian, end turn. Okay, they're just going after attacks. And they have loads of buffs and boons. Wow. Okay, uh, Gale. What are we going to do? They have Bless, so what we really want to do is attack Minthara lots of times in a short period of time so that they're more likely to lose concentration. And we can do that with Magic Missile because it creates three darts and they're guaranteed to hit, which means each is a chance at making her drop concentration. Concentration broken. It's nice when a plan comes together. 
Not going to spend a bonus action there. So let's go to Shadowheart. The goblin on this side went to the other side of the bridge, which is excellent. And so from here... Let's see if we can't give Astarian advantage on his next attack. What is, what is this? Wooden support. That's interesting. We could take out the bridge, although I don't know how that would benefit us right now. That is the biggest radiant damage I've ever seen. 20 damage on 46 is huge. And we have advantage on our next attack against this person. So if we just use our standard bite. Yep, that went well. That is everyone, is it? Bonus actions all round. Astarian uh, is not in this order. It's the other three. So that's that. This goblin boss... is attacking Gale of all people. Uh, we're going to have advantage against this attacker because Andrew is within five feet of them. However, we can't seem to stand right here. Which is a great shame. I guess we can bonus action dash. Move to here. Sneak attack. Then they will take their turn. Andrew is bleeding, but we are currently using only the temporary hit points granted by the wild shape form. Movement reduced by 10 feet. Not a problem. Let's just go to Cantrip City. Critical miss. Standard stuff. Shadowheart. They make it as well. Andrew. You know what to do. Oh yeah. 11. Excellent work. And it's the guy on high. So Andrew bled... And in bleeding, ran out of hit points. And has returned back into his druidic form. We could backstab here. And in fact, this person is next in the order. So we will do that. There's an excellent sneak attack. If you're ever confused that... It says sneak attack, but we weren't being sneaky. Sneak attack isn't the best named thing. You can kind of think it as like, rather than calling it a sneak attack, think of it as an exploit weakness attack because a th an ally of ours was also within five feet of the foe. They are providing a distraction, so the rogue gets to attack with advantage. And because they're attacking with advantage and they don't have any disadvantage cancelling that out, they can make a successful sneak attack. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, that's why if you ever think, sneak attack, he's not being very sneaky, that's why. And we can bonus action offhand attack here. We will miss though. But then it's going to be us up in the order because we killed the goblin who would have otherwise been going next. This. A huge one damage there from the wizard. Thank you. And I think right now... I'm just going to go with Cantrip City for those down here. We can Vine Whip. And then bonus action we can Shillelagh because they're both Cantrips. 
then they will get one turn. They're going for the high ground. They are really ragging on Gale. But that shouldn't be a problem. We are all now joined in initiative. So what we will do is we will have Andrew try and bring this guy closer to us. We missed, unfortunately. The plan was to drag him down here so that Andrew would be close enough to instigate a sneak attack for Astarian. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to attack the old-fashioned way. And we'll bonus action attack as well. And who's left? Shadowheart and Gale still have attacks. That's terrible. Uh, Gale... I think if we can make the attack here, because Gale is so low on health, and I'd really not be subject... rather not be subjected to him going down and having to deal with that circus. We'll just go for another level one magic missile right here. Torment. And that fight is resolved. Seems these true souls have their limits. So, let's just very quickly see what the three here have in their pockets. Arrow of Roaring Thunder. Copper band and some gold. Scrap wood shield. Uh, let's have Andrew do some picking up down here. Potion of force resistance. A scroll of blur. A war map. Can we pick that up? Yep, we'll take we'll take it. Never know when it might be helpful. There's the other goblin. Just some gold. Skip the shields and hand axes. And then the cleric. Excellent. This looks nice. We've got a scroll of kill wounds. Scroll of mirror image. Simple boots. Ringmail armor. And shield. Zyandi. 1d6 bludgeoning. Cast deep fear... Cast deep in the Underdark by Dwargar slaves, the head of this mace is engraved with spiderwebs and ice cold to the touch. Zyandi's fire. Chance to encase its target in a sinister fairy fire, granting advantage to attack rolls against the target. That's very interesting. And the Amulet of Misty Step. Made of blue gems, unique to a privately owned mine in Mesoberanzan, this necklace was likely a token of esteem or perhaps a desperate attempt to win its recipient's mercy. This necklace allows the wearer to cast Misty Step. Now the question is, does that become cast Misty Step with a spell slot or cast Misty Step as a free action? Uh, let's just take that necklace. Andrew picked it up. Let's just pass it over to Shadowheart one moment. And Shadowheart. You do not already know Misty Step. So if you put that on. Uh, it does take a bonus action. Recharge once per short rest. That's very interesting. Okay, well I want Shadowheart to keep the Amulet of Lost Voices on. And the Amulet of Misty Step, I will give to Astarian for now. Since he's always welcome and happy to get into interesting places. And with that done, the last thing to do is Gale. If you could kindly grab this potion. Uh, I don't know what the Curse of the Vampire is. If it's a book or something else. Scroll of Guiding Bolt will also pick up now that we've found it. 
and otherwise we will call that a success one of three bosses down join us next time where we will get he get gale healed up a bit and then plot our next move for defeating this trio of enemies thank you ever so much for watching i'll see you in the next one cheers <laughs>